Good morning, everybody. First thing I would like to do is apologize myself for not being able to talk to you in your local language. I'm Patrick Dalvink. I'm the Vice President for Continental Europe within Trend Micro. And I basically travel a lot across Europe to support my team and our partners as much as I can on a couple of, I would say, very exciting topics. Because I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, we do live in a very exciting time. You saw this little video where you saw Rick Ferguson, one of my colleagues, showing you the helicopter view of not what is science fiction today, but of something that is reality today. So please do not underestimate the topics that we will be covering today. Forget about this is something that happens in America. Forget about the idea that this is something that's only happening and it's the Russians that are doing this. The topics that we are covering today are a reality. We see them happening on a daily basis all over the world. So don't consider yourself, please do not consider yourself as an exception. Please do not underestimate. Everybody is a victim today. By the way, one of the big differences between Rick Ferguson and myself, Rick is the guy with the long hair and the tattoos. I've got the short hair, the big belly, and no tattoos. So, just to set the scene. So welcome. A quick word on Trend Micro. Who's Trend Micro? Well, we're a company that has been in the content security space for more than 26 years now. And we've proven to be very successful in that area. We've proven to be so successful in the area of content security that most people out there recognize us as one of the big antivirus companies. Oh yeah, yeah, you do that antivirus stuff. Just like, and then they mention two or three other names that I'm not going to repeat, of course. But you've got this big label of, this is what you're good at. This is what you're recognized for. But as a company, clearly we have evolved. Not because we wanted to evolve, but simply because we needed to evolve. Because the world out there is evolving very rapidly. And we see today three key changes that have got an impact on all of you. And when I describe them, you will say, yeah, this is happening to me also. The first thing that we see, the consumerization wave. I think that we all understand that we as professional IT people do not have full control anymore about our users. Remember the days when we from IT, we said, here's your PC. We've loaded it with a number of applications. We manage it for you. We secure it for you. And basically, the end user could only use what we gave him or her. Today, the people walk in with all kinds of devices. They want to have their mail. They want to have connectivity. They want to use corporate applications on devices that we as a company do not own, on devices that we as a company do not manage. So the whole concept of how do I secure my most valuable corporate information has become something completely different. It has become a lot more challenging. Trend Micro is a leader in that consumerization wave, in helping customers to manage and secure that fairly new environment, to help our customers to make sure that you all understand that on top of all the risks and challenges that you already had in the old days, there's a truckload of new challenges and new things you have to take care of in the consumerization wave. Second area where Trend Micro is a global leader is the area of cloud and virtualization. Remember the days when you had servers and corporate applications and you put them in a data center and you build a big wall around your data center, your perimeter. 
and you put firewalls and IPSs and, and 17 other technologies that you put in front of your data center to protect your, let's put it very simple, your crown jewels, your most important applications and your most important data. And by simply securing that data center, everything that really had a value for you as a business was well protected. And then you started using virtualization technology. And what most people did not understand is that when you virtualize your data center, most of the traffic does not pass the wire anymore. Everything happens on the inside of the hypervisor between servers that are communicating op over a hypervisor. And all the networking-based security that you had implemented on the wire became useless. That was a bit of a shock. And then the business decided, you know what? It takes me way too long when I ask my IT people to give me five new servers. It takes them two months before I can get access to my servers. You know what I'll do? I'll go on the web and I'll use a cloud provider and I'll buy some servers there. No, I don't even have to buy the server. I'm just going to pay them for as long as I need the servers. And with a couple of clicks and with a credit card, all of a sudden, your data center had just grown. But it had just grown out of your control. Because all of a sudden, you had corporate data and corporate applications somewhere out there. And with that service provider, you knew that you had some servers there, but you didn't have a clue who your neighbors were. You didn't have any control about security in that area. So on cloud and virtualization, the world has changed. We need a completely different approach in how we secure a modern data center. Because today you need the flexibility to decide on the fly whether a server is running on a physical machine, whether it is residing on a virtual environment, or whether today you decide, okay, let's put it in the cloud. And all that movement needs to be supported on the fly, just like that. Because your business owners are not going to wait for the ITers. If I can deploy 10 new servers with one click, I don't want to spend two weeks to get those 10 servers secured. Our business is not going to wait for IT for that to happen. They are finding ways around it. And the only thing you need is a credit card. And I do believe that we all have in our corporate environments a number of high-level people that have got that credit card to make that decision and they just move along. You have just lost control and your well-protected data center has just died. It's gone. And the third big wave, and that's the topic that we'll focus on today, is cyber threats. The landscape has changed. I've been in the security business since 94. I remember the days when most companies were thinking about this new thing, something called internet. And they were looking at, uh, does it make sense for us to, to use it? Is there a benefit? Today, everybody's connected. Today, the landscape has changed. Because on top of all the amateurs and the script kiddies and everybody who's just playing around to send you a virus and some spam and some other rubbish, there is a whole economy, a dark economy of cybercrime. It could be government related, so one government spying on another government. It could be money related. I want to get my hands on your crown jewels. I want to sneak in to your environment. I want to find out where your crown jewels are. I'm going to steal your crown jewels. I'm going to package them in very little packages and I'm going to sneak them out the back door so that you don't have a clue what just happened. That's what's going on with cyber threats. And once I have your crown jewels, I'm going to sell them off to the highest bidder. 
Sometimes, sometimes people will pay me to get your crown jewels. That might be customer information. It might be information that has to do with mergers and acquisitions. It might be personal data. Whatever business you're in, your business has got a purpose. To perform your business, you have got valuable information that you need to manage and secure properly. And with that, I've basically positioned Trend Micro and the stuff that we do outside of that big label that's called antivirus. This is our business. This is where we have more than 5,000 people globally focused on to protect our customers against those new challenges and to make sure that you can keep control over your business and your crown jewels. The title of the session is Project 2020. Let me tell you a little bit about Project 2020. The guy that you just saw, Ferguson, together with a, with a whole film crew basically, they worked on a project, on a project together with Europol. Europol asked us to create a preview on with all this thing happening, with all these new challenges, with everybody running around, being connected, with everybody being able to use a very small device and do everything they want to, where the hell are we heading to? What will the near future, because <laughs> to be honest, 2020 is not that far away, what will the near future look like? And so together with Europol, some of my colleagues build a number of scenarios and we created a white paper. And you find the URL white paper over there. It, it's a white paper that describes where we're heading to from a connectivity point of view, from how we communicate with one another, from how we use the internet, from what people can figure out about me, how people can influence my behavior over the internet when in my eyeballs I would have a television screen and people out there would be able to project all kind of important stuff on my television screen, they could influence my buying behavior. Now from a, from a social engineering perspective, they might be able to figure out a lot more about me, me as a person, than I would like them to. And we all know uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the social media out there. And I do that even today. We see more than enough examples of a little bit too much information that is going out. Not always very comfortable. Now, 2020 is not far away. We've got a whole set of videos. And I really would like to invite you to make sure that you spend a little bit of time on that web pages. And I promise you, you will not get infected when you download those videos and when you have a look at them. That's a corporate promise from Trend Micro. As long as when the site would have been hacked maybe two seconds ago. Then I can't, of course, give you the same guarantee. The point is, we are heading there. It's not far off. So we wanted to give our customers and the broader audience our view of where we believe in the very near future we're heading. We wanted to, we used a number of scenarios. What does it mean for a business? What does it mean for an individual user? What does it mean for, 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 a, for a service provider, for a government? How will everybody be using this new way of working, this new way of communicating? And how do we make sure that we can keep it safe so that your crown jewels do not get stolen? So that your biggest secrets do not become public? And I think that we've got one trailer of the video set up.
What's going on? Getting reports of massive cyber attacks on critical networks. They're coming from everywhere. Augmented reality became a way of life for us here in South Slovenia. We have forsaken the Lord and placed our faith in this instrument of evil. The rise of the content service provider industry has meant that perfectly tailored information is available before you even know you need it. There's no alternative to technological development. No matter what the risk, it's worth it. The first entirely digital election in the world, and it is up to us to make it run smoothly. We may have a problem. Death toll has risen to 90 in what experts are calling the biggest cyber attack of the century, the Great Switch-Off. These elections are going to be our greatest achievement. Incompetence is one thing. Willful ignorance is quite another. This looks like an act of all-out cyber war. Like it or not, you earn it all the way. Yeah, let's see about that, old man. I didn't do anything wrong, you have to believe me. Vector me on an intercept, Lieutenant, and have SWAT meet me there. You promised me defense. In death. We found him. This person needs to believe in the cause. It came from here? You said you wanted to start a revolution. Free everybody. I really invite you to have a look at all, because this was just a trailer. It's a real story. It's a number of scenarios. You see some scary things happening there. Things of which you would say, that's, with all the respect, that's, that's science fiction. I guarantee you that more than 90% of what we're showing there is not science fiction. It is technologically possible today, 90% of it. And I would say that more than 70% of it is technologically being used almost on a daily basis around the globe. And as I said, 2020 is not far off. Most of the things that we see on this slide is technology that is available, are attacks that are happening, and the scary thing is, most customers out there do not even know it's happening to them today. We're in a rapidly changing environment. The old way of protecting our data, our users, and our network is no longer good enough. We urge everybody out there who's running a business and who values their crown jewels to make sure that on a very regular basis you reconfirm that what kind of protection you have in place is the right level of protection. Because with all the changes we've gone through and with the rapid evolution in cybercrime and cyber threats, even protection that was very strong a year ago is almost obsolete today and that's a challenge for all of you and it's a challenge for us as a vendor to make sure that we jointly can keep up to make sure that we well protect our crown jewels The threat landscape has changed rapidly. And to make one thing clear, it's not like all the stuff that was relevant yesterday has been replaced by something new. That's not the case. Everything, all the bad things that were there yesterday are still there. But something else on top of that has emerged and is causing uh, a much higher risk for you and your business. Of course, we still have employees that lose their notebooks, that lose their smartphones, their tablets, that put data in the cloud and then leave your company. So your data is somewhere out there. 
you don't have control. People lose the notebook and there is information on there about your next merger, about your next acquisition, about your product development. It could be public information from the government about me. I don't want my personal information to be shared out there. As a citizen, I have the right to demand my government for to not allow that to happen. We still have the traditional malware. Over 2,500, close to 3,000 new malwares every second. Close to 3,000 new malwares every second. On top of the previous second, on top of the previous minute, on top of the millions and millions of malwares that are out there. There are vulnerability exploits. Holes in operating systems, in databases, in applications. Vulnerabilities that you haven't patched yet. Or that you will never patch because there isn't a patch. Or the system is no longer supported by your vendor. But you're still using it. And it has got vulnerabilities and it's being used. Those are the mass produced. I'm going to try to infect all of you. So I'm going to send something out to the broad public. And I'll probably hit 5% of the audience, and then I'm happy. Or I'll try you, and I'll probably hit another 5%, and I'm happy again. It's not targeted. But on top of that, today, rapidly growing, we see very targeted attacks. Sneaky things. Very targeted, custom built. So instead of launching something and hoping that I'll hit something, I'm going to do my homework right. I'm going to figure out what kind of firewalls that you're using, what kind of IPS that you're using, what's your antivirus that you're using, what kind of protection layers do you have. I'm going to figure out an easy way to get into you. So I'm going to do my research right. And I'm going to use Facebook and LinkedIn and all kinds of conferences and detailed information to figure out which one of you I need to target. And then I'm going to find my way in. I guarantee you, if tomorrow you would get an email from me about this session with a link that says, Here's my presentation of yesterday. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that some of you will not have enjoyed it. That's not a problem. But I know for sure that at least 50% is going to click on that link. Now, what if that email did not come from me? But what if it came from somebody who wants to steal your crown jewels? You've clicked on it. By that time, you are infected. It is already too late you have just opened the door for the bad guys to come in. Now, you didn't know. You thought it was my email. But somebody could have spoofed my email. It's a very simple technique that has been going around for the last 15, 20 years. Very easy. Happening on a daily basis. And all your firewalls and IPSs and your guards at the front door have just become useless. Because you've just clicked on the email. You've just opened the door. Not the front door where all the protection is, but you just opened that window and let me in. That's what advanced malware and targeted attacks is all about. And we see globally a huge race of those kind of attacks. And to be honest, whatever firewall, IPS, antivirus, or name whatever other security technology you currently have in place, it is useless. It does not detect it. So your security people will be looking, if they're lucky enough, at their security dashboard. And the firewalls will be green. And the IPS will be saying, we're good. And the antivirus will not say that there's something specifically going on outside of the few hundred malwares that you have on your network anyhow. But nothing special there. So nothing to worry about. 
traditional security solutions are unable to detect, react, and help you in this area. So I'm very sorry to have to inform you that we, as an anti-malware player, we have not just upgraded our products to the next version and said, now this problem goes away too. Your traditional firewall vendor will not be able to help you with that. Your IPS that you have, you cannot switch on one little thing and all of a sudden this problem goes away. You will need an additional layer of security. And I meet up with people that say, well, Patrick, we've already invested that much money in all the other stuff. And these targeted attacks, they're only 3% of all the bad things out there. That's a bit like saying, I'm going to stay in shape and I'm going to protect myself against 97% of all the diseases out there. And the 3% of real lethal diseases, I don't care. It only takes one, one successful targeted attack and your crown jewels are lost. On average, we see that most, well, on average, we see that companies waste close to 244 days on average before somebody is able to show them that they've had a targeted attack. Now that's a very long time for the bad guys to be playing around in your network. That's the average. You know what the scary part is? It's not getting better. So clearly there is absolutely need to do something different. When we do what we call a proof of concept, because together with our partners like Allison, we can come into your network, use some technology, and prove to you what you've got going on on your network. And during those proof of concept, we can demonstrate to you, we can give you the hard proof that you might need to free up the additional budget that you need to secure against this. We are able to show you, together with our partner, what you've got going on. And here's a subset of what we have found. I believe this is uh, the combined data of 2013. In 98% of all the cases, and we're not talking about 10 POCs here, we're talking about at least four or 5,000 environments that we've been working on globally. 98% of all customers had advanced malwares. People had zero-day malwares. So new vulnerabilities for which there isn't even protection yet. People had Android malware. Because we have to stop protecting ourselves against the Windows stuff only. We're all using smartphones, tablets, all these new operating systems, all these new apps there is an additional layer of threat. So clearly, whenever we test, whenever we do proof of concept, there is enough information that we find on all your networks. The attackers use the gaps. If I know what firewall you're using, what version of the firewall you're using, what, what patch level your IPS system is on, and I do a little bit of intelligent research, and you're down two patches, you're behind on your patch level, then I don't have to be a genius to figure out that all the trouble that the last two patches solved are not solved for you. You don't have to be a genius to figure that out. So by then, I've already found where you've got holes in your protection. And I'm afraid to inform you that it is that simple in many cases. If I would have dropped 10 USB sticks on the parking lot close to the entrance, some of you might have picked up the USB stick and the first thing that you're tempted to do is, oh, let's, let's have a look what's on the USB stick and you plug it into your PC. 
you get infected. The bad guy, very easy way to figure out where you've got the holes. And you are stuck with an almost impossible task because you've got all these devices, all these operating systems, all these applications that you need to manage and secure. The attackers will use and they will customize the attack to make sure that you can't find them. Now, as I said already, the easiest way to get in is with what we call a spear phishing attack. A very targeted mail that comes from somebody that you trust and it's got a URL or a PDF or a Word document or a PowerPoint or an Excel with a, with a title that you can't refuse. Here's the acquisition detail. Here's the salary information. Here are the card details. Here's the detail about the new product development. You will click. The file will look like a genuine file. The fact that you clicked, you've just opened the window. The bad guys are in. They use multiple ports. Let me put it very simple. If you believe that the bad guys can only come in through that door in the back and you're not looking what's happening there and the bad guys have done their preparation work and they know that you've got five security guards at that door, do you really believe that they're stupid enough to try to get in that way while they've got 17 other doors to open where they know that you're not looking? That's reality. They use multiple ports, they use multiple protocols. And once they're in, they will make sure that the thing that they have planted changes in shape and form so that whatever protection... If I know what firewall you're using, what version of the firewall you're using, what, what patch level your IPS system is on, and I do a little bit of intelligent research, and your down two patches, you're behind on your patch level, then I don't have to be a genius to figure out that all the trouble that the last two patches solved are not solved for you. You don't have to be a genius to figure that out. So by then I've already found where you've got holes in your protection. And I'm afraid to inform you that it is that simple in many cases. If I would have dropped 10 USB sticks on the parking lot close to the entrance, some of you might have picked up the USB stick and the first thing that you're tempted to do is, oh, let's, let's have a look what's on the USB stick and you plug it into your PC. You get infected. The bad guy, very easy way to figure out where you've got the holes. And you are stuck with an almost impossible task because you've got all these devices, all these operating systems, all these applications that you need to manage and secure. The attackers will use and they will customize the attack to make sure that you can't find them. Now, as I said already, the easiest way to get in is with what we call a spear phishing attack. A very targeted mail that comes from somebody that you trust and it's got a URL or a PDF or a Word document or a PowerPoint or an Excel with a, with a title that you can't refuse. Here's the acquisition detail. Here's the salary information. Here are the card details. Here's the detail about the new product development. You will click. The file will look like a genuine file. The fact that you clicked, you've just opened the window. The bad guys are in. They use multiple ports. 
Let me put it very simple. If you believe that the bad guys can only come in through that door in the back, and you're not looking what's happening there, and the bad guys have done their preparation work, and they know that you've got five security guards at that door, do you really believe that they're stupid enough to try to get in that way? while they've got 17 other doors to open, where they know that you're not looking? That's reality. They use multiple ports, they use multiple protocols. And once they're in, they will make sure that the thing that they have planted changes in shape and form, so that whatever protection you have, when you update your protection levels, it always remains undetectable. That is the reality of today. That's how these guys work. So how do, they, how do they start off? As I said, they make sure they do their homework right. They figure out enough information about your network, your protection, your personal network, the people that you are connected to. Because if you get an email from one of your business partners, that you frequently do business with. You will never be suspicious on a targeted attack. You just open up the email and read it. When you click on the document and you try to open it up, you get an error message saying, something went wrong. I can't open this file. So you think that, okay, nothing happened. But in the background, a lot of things might have happened. So they start off with the investigation phase. Then they will make sure that they can deliver their initial infection to the right targets. And again, very targeted, very custom built, very specific. Then they will set up communication between the initially infected system and a command and control server on the outside. Now what we see much more happening is I don't want to take too much communication going out of your network to me. So I'm going to put a command and, co command and control server, a CNC server, on the inside of your network. So that not all communication directly comes to me. We'll get the communication going, park it here in your network, somewhere hidden, and then package it in very small packages, and then send it out. The lateral movement across the network, because once I've hit your system, I want to hit other systems in the network. Because I want to make sure if Mr. Security or somebody else spots me, and we clean up that one system that I had initially infected, I want to make sure that I've got other infections in the network, and that I can stay undetected for months. Because I want to continue my search to figure out what other crown jewels you still have that might have value to me. And once I have found the crown jewels, I'll package them in very small packages so that they go undetected outside of your network. Please do not make a mistake. This is not a virus. This is not a worm. This is not a Trojan. This is a completely different beast. And even if this only covers three or four percent of all the bad things that could happen to you, trust me, these are really bad. And we've seen globally a number of examples where it happened once, and the CEO, the CIO, and all the C's in the world just lost their jobs. We've seen companies losing half a billion euros, 1.7 billion dollars. Big established companies going bankrupt over this. So, are you a future target? Or are you maybe even a current target? What makes you think that you are not a target? Or what makes you believe that you have not been compromised? Because your firewall didn't say that there was a, an alert? Or your IPS was not screaming and yelling? Or your antivirus said, oh, here's a new virus and I don't recognize it? Please understand, 
This is a completely different animal. And please remember, this is not science fiction, because if our proof of concept show that on all the different topics, 70, 80, 90 percent of the customers have these kind of infections, then it is reality, then it is happening. Not only in the US, not only by the Russians or the Chinese, it's happening all over the place. Now, I wouldn't be talking about all of this if we, together with Allison, were not able to provide you with the right level of solutions to help you with this new topic. So we might, need, we might have some different approaches or different needs throughout the organization. The people from the network, they would primarily want to know what is going on on my network. What kind of attacks do I have? What are they targeting? The people that are in charge of the mail systems, they would probably say, well, I'd better make sure that I can filter out those spear phishing attacks. Because this is not spam. Spam is volume. Spam is being sent by a known spammer who sends out millions of messages and hopes to hit something. This is one email coming from one individual going to another individual. Your anti-spam, your traditional gateway, doesn't have a clue what this is about. They're unable to detect this. So you need this additional layer to stop these targeted attacks. And remember, 91% of all the targeted attacks start there. There's a very easy way to stop it by at least making sure that you're able to filter out those kind of emails because they are the start of all the bad things happening. And then, of course, for the security professionals, it's like, okay, on top of all the stuff I already have, I now need to make sure that I put this additional layer on top of it. And at the same time, I have to make sure that this additional layer works very closely with my firewalls, with my IPS system, with my SIM solution, with my antivirus, with all the other components I already have, because I don't have the people don't know what might hit your environment. So we use customized sandboxing so that we can mimic your environment in the sandbox environment. This technology looks at known malware, unknown malware, zero days, and the latest and greatest new threats. Because you need to have that holistic view to be able to know, is this one of the things that I need to focus on now? Or is this more, let's say, information? This you can read when you get the presentations later on. There are some independent studies that show that we're really good at this. So I'm not going to stop too much. It's simple. It's a simple solution. We understand that most companies do not have a whole team of people to only do this. So for that reason, we work with partners that can say, do you want to buy the solution or would you prefer to have a service? Allison is one of those partners that can say, you know what, we put the boxes on your network We'll monitor it for you if you want to. We'll have a look at the detail. We'll ring the alarm bell. And we'll tell you what the five things are you need to focus on now. So that kind of highly visible, highly detailed, where's the priority, that's what it's all about. You don't want to know that you've got 7,000 problems. Because you will not be able to do anything with 7,000 problems. You need technology and a good partner that can tell you, here are your top three priorities you should take care of right now. You want to avoid your crown jewels to get lost. And again, we're fairly good at this. And it needs to be security that fit. It needs to be not a standalone solution. Forget about all the rest. You don't need all the rest. With all the respect, rubbish. You still need firewalls, you still need all the other technologies out there. But you need this additional layer that integrates and works together. Let me put it very simple. If our deep discovery has found that there is an attack going on, we can update our own technologies 
and the firewalls and the IPS systems that you're using to block the attack, to raise the protection on your endpoints, on your servers, on your gateway and your mail system. So it's not only about detecting and saying, here's a very nice audit report that shows that you've got 150 problems. No, it's about detecting what is going on in real, t in real time, filtering out what the priorities are, and then raising the bar. So what we can do for you is detect and respond on those targeted attacks. Make sure that we help you very rapidly with making sure that these spear phishing attacks don't come through anymore. And then raise your protection layers. And I said, together with Allison, who's our knowledge partner, it is not necessarily about buy a piece of technology and have fun. It's much more about build and strengthen the relationship so that you've got the right partnership to help you. With when shit hits the fence, you've got trusted partners to help you with prioritizing, detecting, reacting, and responding to the attack. That's what we can do for you. And if it's not today, we will have to do it tomorrow. Because let's be honest, one of these days, you are going to figure out that also on your network, there's a lot of stuff going on that you didn't know about. I hope you won't let it come to that point. By having a proactive approach, we can make sure that you don't run into the challenges that some of the big companies have already had where they had lost their crown jewels. And by the way, they probably lost 50, 60% of their corporate value. So let's make sure that that does not happen. Thank you for listening to me and thank you also to Alison for having me here. Enjoy the rest of the sessions. I'll be around until late afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>